Hello, good morning, everyone. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello. Okay. Okay, good day everyone. Um for today's lecture, this is lecture 22. I will be discussing factors affecting um teaching listening to students. But at the same time, I will be also discussing teaching listening in general. So before we jump into uh, remedial instructions in teaching listening, we also have to discuss first. We also have to discuss first how to teach listening in general. So this is my PowerPoint presentation. And in this PowerPoint, we are going to tackle this part. So we have this parts to discuss. And let's go start right away with this one. So why does listening seem so difficult for some students? So we have to be able to, uh, we have to learn how to teach listening because for some students, uh, listening skill is difficult to acquire or difficult to practice. That's why we have to be able to learn how to conduct lessons or listening activities that will enable or that will help them um, activate that kind of skills. So these are some reasons why listening for some is difficult. So first, students quickly forget what is heard. Okay, it's uh, basically an instance where because listening is spontaneous, they quickly forget what is being said or what they actually heard. Second, they do not recognize words they know. So some students know the word, but actually they cannot recognize it once they hear it. So they have to actually see the word for it to be able for them to be able to recognize the words. Third, they understand the words, but not the intended meaning. So some students understand the words, but not necessarily what it actually meant. Four, they neglect the next part when thinking about the meaning. So this is a problem now when students overthink of a spe specific meaning for a specific word that they intend to neglect the next part of what is being said, especially if it's a uh, if you're reading um, a long story or a, 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 uh, a long passage. So they sometimes neglect the next part. Thus, uh, committing or thus forgetting the coherence of the whole passage that is being read to them. Then they are also unable to form a, ment a mental representation from words heard. So it, although they, they know the meaning of, of the word, they sometimes forget or they sometimes don't know how to form a mental representation of the words, especially if, if the word is not, is, it's, a, it's a word, it's what you call, It's not a tangible word, for example, it's a concept word. Um, and then lastly, they do not understand subsequent parts of input because of earlier problems. So for example, uh, environmental noise could also be a possible reason and so on. Next, okay, what is the main difference of listening to other macro skills like reading? 
So for instance, you have just one go at it. So it's spontaneous, you need to say, you can just hear it once, unlike listening to an audio recording like this one or reading, you can repeat the sentence or you can go over what is being said over and over. Next, the presence of stress, rhythm, and intonation is there in listening. So you can actually stress out or point out the stress, the rhythm, and the intonation in what is being said or it, during the listening activity. Next, the characteristics of fast natural speech is also there. So you can control the, pay, the pace of your speaking and uh, so actually the weak forms okay, of, uh, of speaking or of listening. And then often the need to process and respond immediately because as, as I've said, listening is spontaneous. So you can just, you have to respond immediately to it. Often visual clues, but also other noise. So sometimes you can emphasize what you said using visual clues or listening clues, if that's uh, a more appropriate term, but some also are noise. Okay, like for example, a fillers like um, ganang, buwan. So those are examples of noise as well. And uh, also information is often less densely packed and more repetitive than in reading. So in, in listening mango, you can emphasize, as I mentioned, you can emphasize a word or a sentence by uh, your intonation, your face, your rhythm, but at the same time, you can also repeat it over and over so that the student might be able to understand the sentence or the word more accurately. And then it's natural redundancy, as mentioned in the previous point. And lastly, it's less complex in grammatical and discourse structure. So it's much less in much less, it does have much less complexity than in uh reading and in writing then we have characteristics of the listening process so for one it's spontaneous it has spontaneity it occurs at the instant you have one go at it next is context so it's important to have the context as to the listening process and visual clues Okay, if visual clues refers to not just the sound you make to emphasize a word like intonation, rhythm, and so on, but also when you're speaking face to face with someone, you can see visual clues in their faces, like is this dog in here? Are they do active listening? And facial expression, expressions, hand gestures, and so on. And in the listening process, you course have the listeners response like they nod their heads or close their eyes and so on and the speaker's judgment of adjustment rather okay so a speaker once you see the listener's response you can then adjust your speaking pace perhaps or the kind of speech that you're doing so that um the listening process will be complete as it is next we have the process of listening or the listening process. So there are two main uh, stages in the listening process. So that is first recognition and utilization. So these stages can be summarized into three questions. So first, what did he say? So that is recognizing. Second, what did he mean when he said that or when he said X? Okay, so this is now the second part of recognizing. So in Stage one, recognition, this is when you recognize what is being said. Like for example, hello. Okay, you, you now recognize hello. But the second stage is what did he mean when he said hello? So that's now understanding plus recognizing what is the meaning of what you heard. And lastly, what did he intend when he said X? Utilizing, that is now utilization. This is what when you apply to the context. So, this is now the time that you are going to respond according to the context, according to how you are going to utilize the information that you heard. And then we have also two types of uh, processing in uh, the listening process. The first one is the bottom-up processing. This is when we use our linguistic knowledge and ability to process acoustic signals, which refers to code into phonemes, then words, phrases, and sentences.
Okay, basically, this is when we activate our uh, kind of processing from specific to general information. And the second type of processing is top down processing. This is where the speaker's meaning is interpreted from expectation based on the context, word knowledge, etc. So, if we compare this to processes, bottom up processing means from specific to general, and then top down processing is going to general to specific. So those are the types of uh, processing in the listening process. Next, we'll go to the next slide. And let us consider now the types of listening. So according to two um, pioneers in this field, we have Ferguson and Ross, and they both have certain kinds of listening, uh, types of listening. The first for Ferguson, we have three. Maybe the so we have for for Gosson in two thousand five. The first one is selective listening. This is when we listen for specific pieces of information. The second is for global listening. So we listen for the overall gist of a text, a passage, or a story, perhaps. And third is intensive listening. This is now when we listen for precise information and detail. And this is actually, um, this is when we listen to speeches, uh, to lectures, and to stories. Um, mentioned to us by our friends and so on. Another person who identified the type of listening is Ross in 1990. For him, there are four types of listening. The first one is transactional listening. This is uh, what we do to obtain new information in general. The second is interactional listening. This is to maintain social relationships. Third, Critical listening, this is done in academic context. And fourth, this is recreational listening in which we are doing for relaxation and interchange. So if you notice, the two, two, two pioneers are actually identifying different kinds of um, listening or different types of listening. Only that in Ferguson, we can actually generalize these types of listening in, in Ross's number one transactional listening so we actually listen to obtain information okay so those are the types of listening then let's proceed to the next slide which includes the principles of teaching listening so why do we have to teach listening okay and what are the principles to be able to teach listening appropriately and accurately so first, we have to focus on the process. Do not focus on the product. Do not always teach with the mindset in mind that the, the students must be able to listen to this story. No, we have to focus on the process. Is the process of listening for the students um, correct, appropriate? Are they able to listen? to what you're intended to make them do, or are they able to do what you're intended that for them to do? And then we have to combine listening with other skills. Of course, especially with reading, listening is always accompanied with other macro skills like reading, writing, and speaking. Okay, so listening and speaking always come hand in hand together. Then focus on the comprehension of meaning, not just the act of listening. And lastly, grade difficulty, grade difficulty level appropriately. So you must be able to grade, meaning to say adjust the difficulty level of the activity or your teaching of listening to the level of your students. So that is grading. Then we have three parts in teaching listening. Pre-listening activities, while-listening activities, and post-listening activities. So let's talk about each of them on the next slide. 
So first, free listening activities. What is the rationale behind conducting free listening activities? Can you just do the listening activities at once? The answer is no. So we have rationale or reasons why we have to do free listening activities. One is to motivate students by making the topic relevant and interesting. So you can just you cannot just endorse or introduce um, a new topic to a student without activating their existing knowledge so that they might be able to understand the new knowledge that you are going to teach them. Also, you have to introduce key vocabulary and key structure that the students need in order to understand the text. Okay, so this is very important, not just in listening activities, but in teaching in general. I know that you as future educators know um, how or know that um, uh, free activities like motivation and activating the schema and introduction of vocabularies and new key structures is very important in the lesson plan. So next, let's go now to the next page. These are some of the pre-listening activities that you can do after motivating, motivating your students, activating their schema and introducing the vocabularies. So you can conduct predicting like in this example, in this picture, you can you may ask the students, what are they doing or what are they saying to each other? So that is predicting activity. Next, it's setting the scene or introducing people and places, activating schemata or schema. And then just listening. Okay, so you might want to um you might want to activate just listening to your student before conducting the activity or in the pre-listening activity and then you can make them listen for a specific information okay so before doing the listening activities you can do activities do listening activities that would that will enable the student to listen for a specific information next let's go now to while listening activities. So these are examples of activities that you can do while listening to a passage, a story, or um, a text, for example. So you can do no response. Okay, it's very challenging. Tick boxes like in the example here on the right. Sequencing. Act draw, gap fill, and taking down notes. So those are very important uh, activities that you that might help students develop their listening skills. Next is post-listening activities. So these are also examples of activities that you can do during the post-listening activities. So multiple choice questions or exams, answering questions, like in a debate forum, note taking and gap filling, deck to gloss, like preparation, dictation, and structure, uh, reconstruction and correcting. You can also do role play or debate and also this question. And final thoughts. In teaching listening, do not expect learners to remember more than a native speaker would. Okay, so because there are certain factors that would affect the listening process. Testing understanding rather than memory. Test the understanding of the student in the activity rather than their memory. Okay, it's very important to know that. And lastly, think more about the process than the product. So wrong answers are more interesting because you can identify what went wrong in the process or during the process. So that's now focusing more on the process and not on the product. Okay, so that is for teaching listening. And I know that all of you have ideas already of how to teach because these are um, familiar to you as future educators. So, I'm also going to discuss here remedial instruction in listening. So we now move on to the um, to the part where we identify 
what are the remedial instructions in teaching listening? So first we have factors affecting students' listening comprehension. So there are two, internal factors and external factors. For internal factors, this refers to the learning characteristics, language proficiency, memory, age, gender, background knowledge, as well as attitude, motivation, and psychological and physiological factors that affect their listening comprehension. The second is external factors, which are mainly related to the type of language input, task, and the context in which listening occurs. So this includes environmental noise, um, the language, the task that involve in the listening activity that actually affects the listening comprehension. So each of these factors will be discussed by the next reporters um, thoroughly, but this will be my report for now. I hope to learn a lot and make sure to always read the notes provided in our Moodle classroom and always ask questions if everything or if something is confusing. So thank you so much and see you next time.